Good morning, and welcome to the Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. Uh, today we're going to be over in Matthew in chapter 5. We're looking at uh, the word of the idea of reconciliation or reconcile. Uh, Jesus is writing here, talk, preaching here from the Sermon on the Mount, and he, uh, he tells us right here, he says, um, in verse 20, chapter 5, verse 24, Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. So, how do you reconcile there's been a division? He's talking about a brother, not a sibling. But he's talking about a brother in Christ. He said, there's been a problem between you. <clears throat> so before you bring your, all, your gift, he says, go and make it right. If we back up to verse 24, we would see that he says that that brother has ought against thee. So that the, the brother is something against you. Something has happened <clears throat> that you offended the brother. And so we need to be reconciled. He says, make it right. And uh, sometimes we hear people say things like, well, you don't know what they said or you don't know what they did and, and how this makes me feel. And I just and let, let them come to me first. Uh, they're the ones that caused the problems. I didn't cause the problems. And we see that uh, when we look at it from that point of view, then we see that we're not really loving our neighbors ourselves. You know, the commandment to love that neighbor as thyself, we're not doing that. So we're taking a more selfish at attitude toward it. And uh, he tells us that it's, it's the heart to be reconciled with one another, be in one mind as, as part of the body of Christ. Um, you get over here to verse uh, in chapter 5, verse 43. He says, You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate the enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So we see that in this new covenant in the New Testament, uh, Christ is telling us that you know, things have changed. It's no longer what you do out here in a physical sense. It's what you're doing in your heart, how your heart is. And that's the idea of the reconciliation. Um, I know sometimes we can get our feelings hurt and we get all upset. But, uh, what we need to stop and think about sometimes is what, you know, what does this do to the body? Uh, what about our testimony? Uh, we, a lot of times we forget about it. If, if you're having trouble with a brother in Christ, and, and especially one within your own congregation where you go to church and there's a problem there that's going to affect the whole body and people are going to start kind of taking sides and and uh, can create a real schism within the body and, and god does not like any division in the body we're called to eliminate that kind of thing we're called to we're called to do all we can to to reconcile and to be one in mind heart and spirit and be one in the lord that we might be a, a force in the world that we're in that people might see christ in us that if christians can't get along you know, if we have uh, problems and, and we, we do we have disagreements, you know, it's, those things come along. We get, people get talking about politics and one on one side and one on the other. And we get talking about uh, things like that. And, and we can have some disagreements, even in the style of worship and that. But we don't need to be at, having that division to where we can't uh, reconcile, where we can't get along and, and be uh, respectful and, and be loving to one another. I have a, a couple of verses I want to read over in uh, Romans chapter 12 here. Romans chapter 12, verse 17 and 18. He says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. So it goes back to what we talked about over here, to, to reconcile, do what you can do. And if, if the person that you're having a problem with or has a problem with you won't reconcile, if they won't change, uh, you can't do anything about it. You can't make them, but you can sure be loving and forgiving. You can be caring about it. He tells us over in um, chapter 5 in Matthew and verse 43, you've heard it, it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate the enemy. He said, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And that's one of the things that he just talks about there with the enemy in that, but uh, what does he say to do for our enemies? Yeah, to, to get in their face, to, to rebuke them? No, he says what we need to do is pray for them. The same idea with the reconciliation. When, when we need to be reconciled, and we need to, if that person doesn't want to do that, pray about it. Put, put them in the Lord's hands and let God, through his word and his spirit, if it's truly a brother in Christ or a sister in Christ, whatever the problem is, if it's truly a brother or sister in Christ, then God, through the word and through his spirit, can move them. So we pray for them. Don't pray for a bad things or pray. We want to pray the good things. We want to display a love for them and we want the best for them. And that's what the walk of the Christian is. As we walk this pathway of life as Christians, 
We need to show that love and that fellowship for one another. And don't allow these uh, trivial things to get in the way sometimes. Uh, we, you know, uh, sometimes in, in church and you know, as a pastor and that, and we see some things come into play that, that just kind of kind of blow your mind, like what, where are we coming from? Why are we getting so upset about something so minor? Uh, that, you know, people have those uh, those areas where they, they, they like we call their hot button, and uh, so they can get all upset over something that seems so trivial to you or to me, and to them it's a major issue and needs to be resolved. And so we need to be sensitive to those things as Christians. And uh, if that's a if that's the case, then we need to do what we can do to smooth over that that problem. But the reconciliation, we need to come together to be one in Christ. And that, that's what we're called to be. The world looks at us. We're in the world today. And if you look around us, we can see uh, more and more persecution of Christians. And in, in our own country, we can see that our Christians are being looked down upon. Our God's being pushed out. And so we, we need more than ever now to be one in Christ. We want to show the world that, that we're together. We have a common bond. You know, we're all, have, we're all as Christians, we're indwelt with the Holy Spirit of God. He's within us. And so we, we, we have the Spirit of God. We have the Word of God. So there's no reason for us to have a division. Yeah, we can have disagreements, but there don't need to be a division over a disagreement. There could be unity even when we don't see things the same way. We can still come together because we have a common love, don't we? we all, the Bible tells us we're the love of the Lord, our God, our God, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and all our strength. And to love our neighbor as itself. So this problem that comes out, uh, we need to put it aside. We need to be reconciled and show the world, you know what? We're, we're Christians. We love one another. We care for one another. But the greatest purpose we have, the greatest objective we have, is to share the gospel. And if there's problems within uh, a church, within Christians, uh, it's hard to share the gospel because people, we find hard to tell the good news when we're at odds with our brothers and sisters in Christ. So we need to be aware of what's going on in our lives and sometimes people get upset and we don't even know why people get up and the, the sad part is that people won't tell you why uh, they just shy away from you they turn away from you and so we need to do what we can to reconcile and that's what he said as much as possible within you make things right again if the person other person won't do it we pray for them we do what we can to make their life better not worse and i uh, need to put it all in the lord's hands let him work he can change the heart you can't change a heart. I can't change a heart. But God sure can. So what do you have to do to start with? Though? You need to be born again, don't you? You can't be a brother or sister to a Christian unless you're born again, too. And so you need to repent. You need to repent and turn to God and put your faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's payment for your sin. When you do that, you have the forgiveness of sin. The condemnation of sin is lifted. You now are forgiven of sin. You're born into the family of God. And now you're a brother or sister with all Christians. You know, we have our local congregation, but there is the universal body of Christ, and that's the, all Christians in all the world. And, and we pray for those in foreign lands that are suffering so much for their faith and uh, making that uh, stand for Christ. You and I need to do that, and, and we don't suffer persecution a lot like a lot of them do. So when the, our feelings get hurt or we get upset, we need to put it aside. We need to understand our purpose, our call is not myself. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. And we want people to see Christ in us. So whatever your place is in life, what you need to do is repent, turn and put your faith in Christ, be forgiven of your sins, and you'll have eternal life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day and for this time. We pray you would be with each one of us as we walk this path for way of life. Lord, if there be any uh, problems in our relationships with brothers and sisters, we pray, Father, that we would reconcile, make those things right so we can be a united force against the evils of this world, Lord. We just thank you for loving us. We thank you for what you've done. For those who don't know Jesus, we pray this would be the day, this would be the time that they would repent, turn to you, and trust Christ. Trust that shed blood of Jesus as payment for their sins. And we know you'll forgive them and cleanse them and give them eternal life. We praise you for what you've done and for what you're going to do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.